says, let me let me explain this to show. If you had everything that you ever wanted, would it be enough? That would be great. That would be perfect. Yes. Oh my god, that line was so good. Right, and and the kid is just going like, well, I mean, if if one of the things I wanted was enough, then yes, by definition, <laughs> that would be included in the things. And Dad's like, okay, my amazing verbal trap didn't really work there. <laughs> Uh, back to the story. I was doing another guest car donuts or something. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because nobody will pay me to pet my cats. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Fast cars. Very excited. Let's Very, do it. A lot of room. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fine, Noah, but I'd prefer for this episode to be known by my racer name. Mm-hmm. What's that? E-Mizzle. E-Mizzle. Oh, nice. Nice. Are you sure I'm not going to summon anybody when I do that? Mine's just that <laughs> noise. That's oh. my name. <laughs> okay. All right, so tell us, what will we be breaking it's down today? Oh, sorry. Yours was dumb. That's, that's like oh, wow. offensive, actually. That's it was his almost, word. Almost a slur. Thank you, <laughs> Eli. Wow. All right, well, anyway, we watched <laughs> Buying Time. It's the story of street racing fast cars and proving Christianity at the same time. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the fast and the spurious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, if only they'd thought of that title. And Eli. How bad was this movie? Well, if you love when cars go vroom, but Jesus makes your heart go boom, then you will love <laughs> this moo. Moom? V. Movie? Movie. <laughs> oh, like movie. There, there yeah. you go. Yeah. There, yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you for saving it. Rap. <laughs> Yeah, so clearly this is a movie that was inspired by somebody who saw Fast and the Furious or some street racers or something and thought, oh, I want to do that, but with Jesus, and then realized along the way that it's actually very complicated to get a street Operate a motor on, vehicle, yeah. Well, yes. or, or to get that on video in any way, yeah. Mm, tricky. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst involuntary actor. So Ooh. I'm uh, pretty sure that... The actor who plays the kid. So there's, we're going to get to it right away. There's a kid in this interrogation room scenario and he's being asked questions. For the first like half of the movie, he's responding to it all like he's actually been abducted and an actual shroud has been put on his head and then pulled off and he's being asked questions. And then like the second half of the movie, they're like, no, no, we're doing a Christian movie. And he like acts for the last half. Okay. I think that's what happened. All right. Interesting, interesting theory. Interesting theory. Uh, Who is going to go with best worst random Republican applause points? Yeah. <laughs> this, this movie will do the weirdest shit where like all of a sudden, apropos of nothing, somebody will turn to the fucking camera and go, and then you tell one N word joke and they'll cancel you with their cancel culture. Right. 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 <laughs> But they're always doing sci-fi world building as they do it, right? They'll be like, now that the Megatrons ruin the land and you can't say that trans people are cheating every time they do sports. <laughs> <laughs> the world's yeah. a different place. Rank the races of these babies, Katanji <laughs> Brown Jackson, right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a subtle one. It's half a second at most, but I am going to go with, and it's a big claim, best worst space work. Okay. All right. We have seen someone pick up a sandwich, turn it over, and then turn it back over before, and I think you are right. Okay, but they, yeah, they, did they have a tantrum about the sandwich? <laughs> they did not. No. You're talking about the bowl. You must be talking about the bowl. I am talking about the bowl. Yes, we will I get am. to the bowl. Yeah. I'm very excited. I was. I, I loved that moment and watched it at least eight <laughs> times. All right. It's so stupid. <laughs> well, Clearly, we can't get started unless we rev our engines and squeal our tires for a few minutes. So we're going to take time for a quick break, but we'll be back in a hurry with all the clumsily framed horseshit of buying time. Hi, I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. Fuck you, Canada. Eli, what the hell are what? you doing? We're, we're This is the part where we're telling people about our Toronto live show on May 7th, right? We, well, yeah. 
Well, last time we did that, I told Canadians that they hadn't bought enough tickets, and then we almost completely sold out our VIP and platinum tickets. So, you know, syrup jawed fuckers, you're no. syrup jawed. Well, so it, it worked. Okay. Maybe. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm people okay just that. heard about the show and then got excited to see us. So, so anyway, we're going to be reviewing Journey to Hell, a Christian damnation fantasy so absurd that all the demons are wearing kiss makeup. Kiss makeup. Yeah. No, it's true. They are. Plus, the VIP tickets come with the best seats. And a meet and greet with the cast after the show. Get a real king. What's a prime minister anyway? And, and our platinum tickets come with a free game night with us the day before the show and all the merch and dinner. I'm pretty sure it's the insults. Moose fuckers. I don't think that's what it is. So if you'd like to join us, check the links of the show notes or go to godawfulmovieslive.com for more info. Again, that's godawfulmovieslive.com. God Awful Movies Live in Toronto, May 7th. And we apologize for Eli in advance for whatever Tim else he says. Horton is worse than Duncan. Okay, now you've gone too far. Okay, well, I mean, that's just object objectively true. No, the fuck it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for us to write our next smash it Christian movie. So, um, you know, what's, what's popular? Hmm. Uh, let's see. It's 2019, uh... so people liked... Joker. Joker, yeah. Uh, Avengers Endgame. No. Nope. That was big. No, nope, can't do anything like that. It's too big. What, what about like car movies? Cars? No, no, no. Like the movie Cars? No, like the ones with like Vim Diesel and the other guy. Uh, I actually Black think guy. it's Vim Diesel. It's, that's what I said. No. Well, you, you said Vim no, you, you Diesel. Totally said, you said Vim when, it doesn't Diesel very clearly. Really, it doesn't matter. Th th those movies, like the Angry and the Cars or whatever. Fast and the Furious. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Let's make one of those. Um, Okay, so what's what's in one of those? Oh, um, cars, cars, mm -hmm. it, uh, explosions, stunts. They do stuff like that. But can't do those last two at all. What they talk? Okay, technically. All right, so we make a talking and cars movie. The kids will love it. So what what kind of cars do you guys drive? Uh, I have a Prius. I was biking a lot lately. Personally, I, I'm trying to go green, so. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so, so we can rent nice cars. Yeah, like a yeah. Toyota Camry. Yep, exactly like that. Like a Corolla. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off on a Bible quote. 1 Peter 5, 8, which is about being sober and vigilant, and thus a great Bible passage to smoke a bowl to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, and sober and vigilant because the devil is always about... Like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, just constantly. This reminded me from the start of the movie, like Christian people are afraid of a literal goat demon yep. on a daily basis. They yeah. think about that. Antonin Scalia was a Supreme Court justice yep. who thought about that every day. Mm -hmm. My paraphrase of that quote is, there are monsters under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> so we get that and then this title card comes up and it says the story you are about to witness takes place in the near future but it's typed out based on the sound effect on a commodore 64 yeah really wish the title card guy was a faster typer it's like yeah it's like oh come on mom just call <laughs> i said don't i can never remember where the am is also no, it doesn't take place in the near future no nope. what fucking kind of title card is that well, and then they add sort of a like a for realsies, though, title card <laughs> after that. Right. They're like, this movie is like a metaphor it, for other stuff. Doesn't it say like, don't ignore this warning? Yeah. It says like, this is a warning. And then it's like, no, but seriously, don't. I'm the movie. Don't. <laughs> yes. Me. Yes. For real. Don't, oh, don't turn it off. <laughs> okay. One more title card. Seriously. Take it serious. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then we we finally get done with our title cards. We're on a we're watching a motorcycle and and learning that these people don't really know how to film a close up of a motorcycle while it's in motion. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of cameramen being like, I thought I think I got it <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> what if I drop in on a skateboard ramp right next to him real fast <laughs> as he's going? But we'll put the ramp next to the, no. I hurt myself. Okay, that didn't work. No. So, yeah, so we're getting a motorcycle driver. We're getting black and white street race flashbacks. Yeah, a lot of people sitting around revving their engines. I wrote in my notes, I'm glad my next door neighbor got his own movie. <laughs> Good for him. You have a fun relationship with your next door neighbor. I who... tried radical vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How'd that go? 
So and then the title card comes up of the movie itself. It's buying time. I, I read Burger Time because of the retro game thing, but it's it is buying <laughs> time. So anyway, at length, motorcycle guy eventually ends up pulling up to a warehouse and having a generic bad guy exchange. <laughs> Correct. As soon as we cornered him, and I wrote in my notes, really? I, I want to see that. Right? It's just like uh, you're under arrest. Ah, it's, it's two, four, guilty. six, seven. I was, it's guilty. <laughs> it was me. I killed him. <laughs> yeah, I just had it in my notes as um, black suit sunglass guy is submitting his folder to black suit goatee guy. <laughs> Both of them had goatees and sunglasses. By the way, like, I don't know why I designated them oh, that way. Yes, they did. And so then, like, one of our main characters has a shroud over his head, and he's in this warehouse -y thing. They pull it off, and he, you watch him in his eyes be like, okay, sunglasses in the, the dark. I you Goatee, you're, you're henching it? You're, you're a yep. henchman? What What's going on <laughs> Clearly. right now? Well, but before he says any of that to himself, you see him move his head back and forth with martial arts sound effects. Yes! Oh. There is a lot of head turn foley going on in this scene. <laughs> but yeah, he looks at ominous goatee guy. And then clearly what the writer's going for here is like creepy Agent Smith monologue. Uh, but it's fucking it, hilarious. It, it, it's it's not insanity. Work. Hey, Steve, we're going to write the opening monologue for your evil character. What can he do to really express how dangerous he is? I go to a chiropractor. Libertarian <laughs> chiropractor argument. Have you ever slept on your neck weird? <laughs> <laughs> scary, 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 scary. <laughs> Yeah, he does this whole bit. He cracks his neck, and then he talks about cracking his neck and how he used to go to a chiropractor. And then he decided to start doing self-chiropractic. And I'm like, that sounds every bit as effective, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and this is this is our kidnapped, actually abducted actor here. Yeah. And I'm quite certain. That, so he, the, he's responding to this all happening. I think a shroud was really pulled off his head. And then a guy was like, I go to the chiropractor. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy continues to give the libertarian chiropractor speech where he's like, so this is we should be allowed to break our own neck if we want to. I told my chiropractor I wanted to do my own chiropractor stuff. And he was like, don't do that. You might break your neck. But I think that we should be allowed to do that. Right. And he pauses and the kid's like, ah, what is happening? <laughs> what? It's even better than that. The kid replies, are you going to hurt me? <laughs> well, at first the kid pauses and, 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 then, <laughs> and then the guy keeps going. And he's like, no, this is America, like free market, neck breaking. And he's like, I feel like you're doing rhetorical questions in a speech. You're going to get mad if I jump in. But are you, you paused. Are you asking me if I agree with your free market <laughs> libertarian neck breaking speech? It's so confusing. This kid is not acting yet. Yeah, I think you found his acting a lot more convincing than I did. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, I, I found it infomercials level. Of, yeah, of right, right. But so, but they're like, he's like, what do you want from me? And they're like, all we need you to do is talk to someone and then you'll get a fresh start. Like being born again, the wink. I'm wearing sunglasses. You can't tell, but I'm winking. Oh, uh. And he's like, yeah, sure, man. I'll talk to somebody. And they put a hood back on him and they're like, and he's like, with, with a fucking hood? Okay, fine. Whatever. Fuck. And then they the screen flashes a bunch of times to fuck with Eli's epilepsy warnings. Yep. See safe. So sometime later, he's still at that same table. They take his hood off again. And now there's a different guy across from him. And it's his estranged father. Okay. I need to talk <laughs> about the old age makeup. <laughs> right. Because these two are approximate. Like, like, there's an eight year age difference between these two actors. So. Yeah. So they have decided to... Take a good hard look at the front of the old man costume they bought at Halloween Adventure <laughs> and using the makeup they bought at Halloween Adventure, try to make him look somewhere between 40 and 80. Ballpark. Yeah, they draw these amazing crow's feet on his eyes. It's like, dude, the guy's supposed to be 40. <laughs> yeah, I really thought it was Stephen Baldwin for a second. Me I got too. Really fucking mm -hmm. excited. But then they like zoom in a little closer. I was like, oh, okay. Well, it's like Stephen Baldwin, but he, he found the antidote to whatever poison is fucking with them all the time. <laughs> so he's like, melty thing. 
took some, you know, Benadryl. It's like Stephen Baldwin with a little bit of Benadryl. It's a little more reasonable. I, I, I literally, I like the second they showed him, I was like, oh, I look, I looked this up at IMDb. I didn't know there was a Baldwin in it, but then yeah, you get a better shot of him. He's very clearly not a Baldwin. By the way, dad, dad's name is Nicholas Demas. Yes. So mm-hmm. I bet his Nico, middle initial is O. Nico Demas <laughs> is <the> gospel. Of <laughs> Did Demas I mention that I'm Nicholas. Irish? <laughs> Does that whole he, he's the super rich guy who brought like a whole bunch of impossibly big amount of aloe to Jesus's burial too. It's so dumb, and they actually bring it back, and they're so goddamn proud of themselves. Yes, they really are. I also have to talk about an inconsistency here. When this scene starts, he's struggling right against ropes. We assume are tying him. Right. Then they take it off and he sees this is dad and he just gets up because he yeah. forgot he was supposed to be tied. In yes. Place. He gets up. He's still handcuffed and he's yelling at him and everything. And boy, is he yelling. My notes here were just yelly acting over and over again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yelling is acting. Look at me. Right. I am yelling. <laughs> yeah. But we establish here that dad was physically abusive and then just left him at a certain point And he was like taken as a ward of the state. Right. Right. It's like someone wrote the dialogue for an abusive father, but in a heist movie, right? Because it's like, I don't want to talk to you. Don't want to or can't want to. What's the difference? (laughs) Honestly, it felt like a computer wrote it. You know when they like feed a a bunch of movies into a computer? It felt like they fed all the Oceans movies into a computer and one O'Neill drama. (laughs) And this is what spat out. By the way, dad's explaining how he's not abusive anymore. Mm -hmm. The context, though, is he's saying, I'm not abusive anymore. They're inside a fucking CIA black site where he's going along with his kid who's been abducted and shrouded and handcuffed. Yeah. And they're interrogating him in this dark warehouse. Yeah. And he's like, there's this amazingly stupid line that I have to point out at at one point. uh, The dad says to the kid, the kid's name is Adam. The dad's name again is Nick. Nick says, Adam, you'll never know where you're going until you know where you've been. And I'm like, okay, that's that's wrong. Right. That's incorrect. And like if you (laughs) if if you wipe my memory entirely and put me in front of a Starbucks moving towards it, I would know where I was going. It's the nature of vectors. Yes, just. exactly. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know why I felt the need to point that out. But yeah, and then the kid's like, all right, you said I had to talk to him. I've already talked to him. So I get I get to leave, right? <laughs> Technically. I don't, I don't think black site people let you go on technicalities like that. I don't but think apparently like, not. Fuck, we, oh, we said Oh, we, we did said say. It, we said it wrong. We did say. And we're a black site of our word. <laughs> no wishing for more wishes. Oh, shit. And then we also established that both dad and son are into street racing. Dad was a big street racer as a kid, and that's what Adam does now, too. Adam says to him, he goes, just because we both raced cars doesn't make me your son. And he was like, well, that is true. No, that is is not what makes him his son. (laughs) But dad says, I was a street racer and I never lost. I'm like, that's unlikely. (laughs) undefeated at unsanctioned street racing. Yes. <laughs> undefeated. There's also a great moment here where they're trying to do like a, there used to be this one course because they're about to doodly do us to the race. Right. right? And he's mm-hmm. like, there was this one course. It was perfect for racing. W- one mile long. And I was like, wow, that's a short fucking race. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's what they want to do with the drag race. But that's the, you need the, the road has to be more than one mile long. You can't just end right there. Like, boop, boop, boop. I won because my car started first. Yep. So it's like a wily e. coyote scenario. Like this <laughs> doesn't go well. Yeah. So yeah, but but we doodly do back and dad's like, there were these two brothers, the Destin brothers. Right? Petey and Ben Destined. Yeah, Destin, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and and We'll help you out here in a way that the movie didn't help us out. From here on out, Dad will be telling the story of Petey and Ben Destin. Right? Yeah. That is incredibly unclear within the film. You're you're constantly asking, who are these people that he's talking about? Eventually, the movie fills you in. But from here on out, the past story will not be a flashback of Dad's memories, but rather of Ben and Petey Destin. Right. Ben and Petey Destin, who he knew only peripherally right anyway so we see they ben and pd are at a at a street race and then we see somebody get 
into an accident and get hospitalized and we zoom in on that person's eyes and then have that person's flashback. Yeah. Which is also the story that dad is telling. Right. We're in a flashback in a story to be clear. And this let's get even more confusing with the fucking plot of this movie. He's flashing back from an accident he's in to the time he recovered from a different a different accident. accident that we never reference otherwise in the movie. Yeah, this movie has sort of a Donnie Darkonesian time loop feel to it yeah. ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of these actors don't shower very often. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my guess. So, so okay. But the guy who is in the with all the fake blood, that's Ben. So we we see Ben waking up post accident, but not that accident. No. And Gus, the pushy preacher, is there. Who the fuck are these people? Who the fuck is Gus? I don't know. The movie's pretty sure I know who these people are, though, and what happened. Yeah. We didn't see... The, when they show the crash, they were standing at the beginning of the race, and then they got... Like, what happened in the race? It was like they were watching someone else get into a wreck. Yeah. It was like the, the, the first time they did a race, and they were like, you know what? Full circle was a mistake. I say we just <laughs> we end it out there and then, you know, <laughs> fool me once. OK, but yeah, so Ben wakes up in his room. He's got a broken arm and he's got a cast on this leg. And he also has classic one dimensional personality movie room, mm -hmm. right? Like he's into cars. So there's a picture of an engine on his wall on his shelf. I shit you not. There's a book just called cars mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> he's also like 30 he should have had a race car bed he really should have had a race yeah. car bed i don't know how old he's supposed to be but he very much has the room of like a six-year-old who's really into cars yes uh-huh <laughs> yeah so but so gus th is there and he's like i'm kind of like your dad but not exactly right he go goes into their backstory yeah you know the last thing you know the last thing your father said to me when he died so just to be clear we're now hearing a story within a flashback inside a story <laughs> it's, it's inside a story it's a Russian nesting doll of bullshit yeah also just to be clear Gus just saw this kid wake up from almost dying in a car crash and he's like so funny story your dad got killed by a drunk driver that was like a whole thing I'm technically he said last words right before he died I'm I'm basically your dad now. Yep, so dibs. And this kid's like, thanks, thanks, Gus, feeling great. Can you leave now? I'm feeling so much better. You're you're done? Well, it'd be nice if he was, but instead, Ben is like, uh, well, you know, I've been thinking about it, Gus, and I'm afraid of going to hell. I want to be a Christian. And I'm like, you can't be afraid of going to hell unless you're already a Christian. <laughs> right? I don't I don't understand why you people don't get that. Those two things have to exist together. <laughs> you know how you guys aren't worried about Shiva like at all? Right. <laughs> yeah. So fucking. But but Ben decides he wakes up from his accident and he's like, you know, I could have died in that accident. I want to be right with Jesus in case that happens again. Yeah. And Gus is like, so yeah, you, you just tell God that you're like on board with it. And then he fucks up doing that. He's like, yeah, he totally does. Oh, uh, what do I do? I just talk to God. That seems hard. All right. No, I got it. I'll try it. Hey, God, today, ah, uh, kill me now. Fuck. Sorry. I said, kill me now with the first thing I thought <laughs> it was, was kill me. Was that, did I do it right? No. But so Ben becomes Christian and then we cut back to the interrogation room where Adam is just laughing at how boring and stupid this movie is. Right. Oh, my God. And he's trying to do so he's got his head down on his arms like he's a badly behaved child. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he's trying to do the like slow clap like ha ha ha. But his head's down in his arms. So it's like oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and the dad has to be like, I, I can't. I can't hear you. You have to sit up. And he's like, sorry, I was saying, ha, ha, ha. I don't, um, I don't care about your story. Just so you know. And then as though this movie wasn't already confusing and stupid enough, Adam says, I don't even get it. The guy gets into an accident and bam, he becomes Christian. And the dad's like, huh, bam was Christian. And he's like, what? And he's like, bam was Ben's nickname. And he's like, why are we, are we going to do a who's on first base in the middle of this shit? Why? It was insane. 
the level of convoluted and nonsensical that this dialogue develops into. It's like, have you ever been watching a program and then you accidentally hit a button on the remote and it's Spanish? It's like, dumb. <laughs> that's how this movie felt. Or like, you know how like sometimes you'll turn two pages instead of one yeah. in a book and like the sentence kind of lines up and you're just like, wait, why is he here now? Yeah. A lot of that in this movie. There's one line in this scene where he says, how many times have you been somewhere? <laughs> he does. And then he pauses for like eight <laughs> minutes. Infinity? Zero? I don't know. <laughs> I wrote all the times. I don't know, man. All of them. <laughs> yeah. But the point of how many times you've been somewhere, long pause, is how many times have you been somewhere and felt like you were being watched? And this is where we get something that I don't think ever pays off, which is demon vision. Yes. Right. Right. The point of this speech is that there are demons just sort of hanging out, watching us when we do bad stuff. Yep. And we actually see the demons eye view. Demons apparently have terrible peripheral vision, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted the kid to be like, hey, dad, are you doing like CGI in your own head right now? Because <laughs> you're like staring up and waving your hands at stuff. Are the demons in the room with us now? Oh, they are. Jesus Christ. Are you, you going to be okay? Really wanted the demon to turn it up to 1.5 speed like I was. Oh, God, I'm so bored. <laughs> this is better. So then we like we rev our way into another flashback so the movie can tease us. We get the like the getting ready for the race scene, but apparently like demon's eye view is is at the race. Oh, I really wanted a third person cut of this demon just trying to blend in in a drag race. <laughs> like a seven foot tall fire demon being like, Who are you guys gonna bet on? My name is Franklin. See, that's the problem though. Demons can't interact with anything, apparently. Well, yes. first of all, they can't see very well, which nope. is a weird drawback. They can't like do anything. They they can only watch. Mm -hmm. But what this demon in the demon he was watching is a whole bunch of vice that's happening. Right. So he has to just walk past everything and be like, oh, I guess I don't really have to be here. Then. Yeah, there's, right. He's like, oh, it's nice. Smoking and, and, and smoking. And uh, there's, <laughs> you know, uh, lust in hearts, probably. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, so we get that. We get a, a car go a tumbling as if. And this isn't something that's happening in the movie right now, by the way. This is just a flash forward to an accident that's going to later happen. So this is just here to confuse us again about the timeline. Yeah. All right. So while everybody putters what the hell that wreck was in relation to the rest of the movie, I guess we can pause for another break. But we're back in a hurry with even more buying time. So we're just getting no marshmallow peeps. That's what you're For saying. For the last time, yes. I hate this. Oh, and, oh, and we need some coffee uh, too. Oh, oh, uh, who are you? Hello, I'm grocery store coffee beans. What do you say, boys? Ready to take me home? Um, no offense, but you seem kind of old. Oh, I am. The coffee beans you find at the grocery store are months old, at least, which can leave your coffee tasting bland, bitter, and chalky. But, I mean, <laughs> what else are you going to do? Well, I mean, we could just sign up for trade coffee. What's trade coffee? Is that a new gender? Because I don't understand no, that stuff. No, no, Trade coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters. These are independent businesses from big cities and small towns. Trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being the largest source of new growth for them. It's true. Trade sent us three months of coffee to try, and I was amazed by how much their quiz nailed Heath and Eli's tastes. It's true. They really did. Wait, a quiz? Like, to see if you're a commie? No, no, Ben. What? Just answer a couple of questions, and you'll get your own personalized variety of coffees delivered fresh to you as often as you like. No gimmicks. Darn, that sounds good. It is good. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off their first order plus free shipping when they go to drinktrade.com slash awful. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $30 off. All right. Well, I guess we won't be needing you then. Please. Please don't leave me here. Oh, uh, look, meatball samples. Yeah, nice. meatball samples. Time comes for us all, and it will come for you. <laughs>
All right, guys. So this is the big confrontation before the race. So let's like really let each other have it on this. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And action. Well, if it isn't D money, fast Craig didn't know you were racing for show, 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 show. You're damn right. I am going to take you down tonight. A biatch. Cut, cut. What? Craig, you can't do what? What, what's up? What's Listen, you can't say damn or biatch, man. This is a Christian move. Just read the script. Oh, okay. No, no. Sorry. Got it. All right. All right. Go. So, action. Fast Craig. Didn't know you were racing. For show, 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 show. Gonna take you down tonight, miatch. Wait. Miatch? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, smack talk. Is yeah, smack talk? No, 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 it's not. It, it's not a word. Miach is not a word. It's an urban mm. word. That's what Christian audiences want, man. Can I just not say it? Uh, no, no. This is like the big confrontation scene. We need it to be tense. Uh, uh, fine. Sorry. Okay. I got it. So, D-Money, you want to just take it from your next line? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I'm not a miach froom froom make the walls go boom. This is literal nonsense. What are you talking about? Cra Craig! So, uh, I mean... Squiggle, squiggle. Don't feed a gremlin after midnight. And cut. All right, guys. Great work. Yeah. The last line's literally from a different movie. That's Craig. Gremlin. Sorry. Sorry. And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with Ben chilling in the living room, recovering when Petey shows up and grabs his broken arm and shakes it a little bit. <laughs> Frank war. Yeah. And so, of course, this is, by the way, where I figured out for the first time that this was Ben Daston and what the hell was going on, right? So this is where I caught up to that. Sure. But Petey, the brother, is like, wow, man, Gus, the preachy pastor guy, he sure is a preachy asshole, and I sure do hate all his Jesus-y bullshit. You also hate all his Jesus-y <laughs> bullshit, right? Right. Right? This Christian actor, it's he's clearly guilty about being the atheist bro here. So <laughs> he, he like he didn't act all the way on full. He did it like medium as best he could because he felt bad. Yeah. So he didn't want to like win the moment okay. in the acting. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's like how the stepdad in Napoleon Dynamite was a vegetarian, so he never actually swallows the steak on camera. That's how this Christian actor approaches acting. <laughs> <laughs> He never actually acts on camera, yeah. <laughs> There's a spit bucket for his blasphemous words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, worst actor in this film is a high bar to clear, but he fucking clears it. <laughs> he doesn't open his mouth all the way when he talks either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like he always just had five or six Sour Patch Kids more than could really fit in his mouth. <laughs> Ooh. And then he had to do the scene. And he's a little squanched up. He's never stopped being a warhead warrior. Yeah. He just doesn't understand that that's a thing you can let go of at a certain age. <laughs> I was a warhead warrior. So, uh, yeah, but Petey doesn't want to hear about this Jesus-y bullshit. Ben's like, no, I actually, I totally am into Jesus now. And he's like, I don't want to hear this bullshit. And he's like, Petey, you don't have to be afraid to be a Christian. And I wrote in my notes, I'm like, did they... Do they think we're afraid or is that like a taunt or is that a you're too chicken to be Christian? What What is their goal when they do that? I am afraid to be Christian. I, that's terrifying to me. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair. No, that's that outlook. That's like, you know, I was thinking about how you were saying that being always afraid of a demon. It's like, you know, when you go down into your dark basement and you run up the stairs real fast, even though you're a full grown adult and you know that ghosts aren't real. Yes. Being a Christian must just always be that run up the basement <laughs> stairs. I get it. I, I can see why one would be afraid to I've do that. I've hurt myself a lot doing that. Yeah. So that's why I'm afraid to be a Christian. Yep. Except that you don't get to at the end go, I'm so stupid. There's nothing stupid. down there. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. No one's. I'm going to close this. I'm going to latch it though. <laughs> just to be on the safe side. <laughs> Cause you yeah, know, it just makes sense. But so, but this is where we meet Anita, the love interest. This is Ben's girlfriend, or at least she was before he went all Christian. Okay. Podcast listener, let me clue you in as we describe this movie to the true horror. This character, Nina, is the young man, the, the kid who can't act, who's in the interview scene. That's his mom. So keep in mind, as we describe everything that she will be and do throughout this film, this is a dad telling his son about the things his mom did. Yes. Okay. Well, you just spoiled the linear twist that they're going to get to, but it's fine. <laughs> right. And also, her, the character's name is ne Anita, and they occasionally call her Nita. You just call her Nina. I don't want to confuse anybody with that. Oh. Like, this movie's already confusing enough, so... In my defense, Nina is a name. <laughs> yes, no, it is. It is that people, that humans have, yeah. 
Cuffy Migs Nita. Uh, yes. <laughs> exactly. So, yes, but he tells Nita that he's Christian now. And she's like, oh, <laughs> fuck you. And she leaves. It's the best. She's like, cool. Good story. I'm going to go find some dick later. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yep. Great idea, girlfriend. Go find some dick. Absolutely. I've unveiled some weird kinks to some women in my time. Yeah. No one has ever exited a room more quickly than Nita. <laughs> Just like, oh, what's that? Ring, ring. Oh, it's <laughs> Mr. Peanut. I better go. <laughs> Do you have a parish? Dude, was that a ripcord? How did you? <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. So, yeah, but then, so Nita leaves, and just then Ben's mom comes in to tell him how proud she is of him for becoming Christian. Yeah. There is a good argument to be made that, like, a solid 24% of this movie is directed at Christian bitchy moms specifically. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Like, every mom we've ever roasted for vulgarity, for charity, for what a horrible bitch she is, this movie is directed at her. Yep. That 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 is the target audience of this film. So okay, so we leave that scene. We cut to Petey on his motorcycle. He shows up at the races that night, and Ben is telling everybody about Jesus when he gets there. Okay, this was almost my best worst. Can we talk about have we seen the wind guy? Yeah, well, first he explains that being born again does not involve climbing into your mother's vagina. So if you were afraid of that, there's no reason to worry about that. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that sounds ridiculous that somebody would say that out loud, right? That's insane. That's in the Bible. That's literally, this is the Nic this is the Nicodemus scene in the Bible. Yes. Or one of them. Nicodemus shows up and he starts talking to Jesus. And Jesus is like, you got to be born again. And he's like, I wouldn't so fit. Climb, in climb back in, inside the vagina? Or, <laughs> what, is, that what you, is that what you mean? And Jesus is like, <laughs> no, of course you were, you were just doing like, you know, the reasoning thing that we do. You were eliminating that. That's obviously not what it is. Yeah. And that's actually the apologetic. <laughs> Nicodemus stops like lubing himself up. Yep. No, I oh, got oh, it. Oh, metaphor, see, metaphor. Meta yes. Metaphorical born again. Totally. Yeah. Are you, you, you doing a breast stroke there? It feels like you're trying to swim <laughs> it. Are you wearing a snorkel, Nicodemus? But <laughs> <laughs> By Hitachi? Is that a Hitachi snorkel? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> But then in, in explaining this story to the big crowd that's gathered, Ben says, you know, he's trying to make his big point about Jesus. And he's like, have you ever seen the wind? And I'm like, ooh, pretty strong apologetics here. <laughs> but one, one guy's like, sure, man, all the time. I've seen the wind. And he's like, don't fuck up my thing. No, 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 you can't. Steve, no, you haven't. <laughs> Obviously, you can't see the you wind. You can see, see the, the effect of the wind. God, I watched this guy heckle with, yes, I've seen the wind four times in a row. It is, it is more <laughs> funny each time. It's so good. You will never convince me that that extra didn't just improvise that. <laughs> just out of nowhere, all the way in the back. I seen the wind. I've seen fuck. the wind. Is that, do I win a prize? This is serious. Get out. Who is that? So, yeah, and he goes, well, so, no, you haven't seen the fucking, you stop, shut up. You don't, and he, then he says, you don't know where the wind comes from or where it's going. You just know that it's there. It's like, I know where wind comes from. This is, again, this is the nature of vectors. This is very confusing. What the fuck movie. is wrong with you people? Like, and, 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 and he doesn't even mean like, you know, temperature variances and different altitudes. of air. He means like the east. Yeah. Right? No, it, it came from the side where the leaves aren't going. You know, like, <laughs> it's real simple. Have you ever wondered who is blowing to make the wind? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jesus, I think. I've been a Christian since this afternoon. Yeah, right, right. I'm telling you all about it now, though. I also love that, of course, they're at races, so there are parts where these cars keep revving over his preachy bullshit, and I'm just like, oh, I want to be in a car right now. <laughs> We should also point out, actually, I shouldn't say I know this. I don't think these are particularly nice cars. Are these particularly nice cars? No, but there's the a couple, but there's one. <laughs> a couple of them are so rough. There's one where it's just like an 83 Sierra, like a Cutlass Sierra. It's like all rusty and shitty. Yeah. So good. You know, it's the one you got for like $400 in the tips you made at the golf course when you were 14. <laughs> it's the greatest. Yeah, we would have had been 14 a long time ago. But yeah. And then so, but then just then in the mid sermon or whatever, D money, the slow motion baggy pants gangster is here to <laughs> bitch about how much money he lost in that race that okay. Ben got in an accident in. His name is money. Like Noah wasn't exaggerating. His his name, his character's name. 
his money. Yes. His team money. Yeah. Yep. And he's, uh, I think we could sue him for stealing the caricature of Coupon Craig. <laughs> he's absolutely Coupon Craig. He's Coupon Craig. He, he's, he's Coupon Craig. He's so problematic. This is a white guy. He looks like Ali G, but yep. like unironically, he is Ali G. And yep. he shows up and he's like, money's in the house. Cash is king. Styling, profiling. D- yep. West Philadelphia. Born. No, that's yep. okay. Oh, it's Sorry. Taken. Shit. His literal first response to how is it going? D money is styling, profiling. And then he looks for a second and he's like, I don't have any more rhymes. Fuck shit. I don't no, have any more rhymes. Smiling, okay. smiling. I'm smiling. Violin shit. Fuck this. And then I went and made a donation to the NAACP because I felt uncomfortable. <laughs> but he's like, Ben, I lost money on that race where you got into that accident, which is why you have a broken leg and arm. So I'm going to need you to do another race so I can win my money back. And he's like, nah, man, I can't do illegal street racing because of the illegalness now. Sorry. Is there something in the Bible about street racing? <laughs> the movie seems to think there's something in the Bible about street racing. God has a whole anti-chariots of iron thing. I get oh, it. Oh, no, I that's it. true. Is it, is it, it's an iron chariot? That is true. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, that that Cutlass Sierra is pretty much an iron chariot. <laughs> and, but I'm writing in my notes. I'm like, guy, this movie knows that there's a like legal forms of drag racing, right? <laughs> that there is not just an illegal thing. Like racing is just a thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> If you're looking for the Christian version of racing, may I introduce you to NASCAR? Yeah, to racing. There you go. Yeah. And then so he's like, no, I can't do it. And Money's like, woo, I'm mad at you for that. And then before he exit, Money goes, money is in the house. And I don't know Long pause. which brilliant genius <laughs> instructed the extras not to react to that statement <laughs> at all. He's so mad. Nobody says anything. But if I could have the best. my tombstone play a video, it would be <laughs> money's in the house. Two. Echo, cricket. Three. Cricket. Four, cricket. Silence. All right. I guess I'll see you guys later. All right. So, yeah. That's actually then- my tagline. Money's in. <laughs> and cash is. What do we always say? You guys can. Audience king, cash is king. Fuck like, you guys. God damn it. And he leaves. So, and then, and not only does he leave, but everyone leaves, right? Everybody leaves, and it's just Ben and Petey there. And Petey's like, <laughs> dude, you made us look stupid. And he shoves him. The dude's got a broken leg. He just shoves him over. And he's like, well, that was a kind of a dick move. <laughs> Ow. Fucking asshole. And he says, he says, tell God that you suck now. <laughs> and, and Ben's like, God knows, Petey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not understanding that he's just said that like, yeah, yeah, no, the God of the universe knows I suck now, obviously. I'm the worst. And then Petey gets on his motorcycle. And the obviously <laughs> the intent here is to angrily drive away a la Johnny and his gang leaving mm-hmm. the beach and running over the radio or something. It goes so bad. <laughs> he's trying to be all fast and angry. Yeah, Johnny Lawrence, Cobra Kai. Yeah. But he... He, he goes for this donut and it's going it it's so the slowest. fucking you badly. You can make real donuts faster than he does. I was I watching on one and a half sale. speed and it was like a slow motion. He had to be like up, <laughs> up and put both feet down for a second. Up, turn it, Shit, turn it. Rup, it was, ring. No, okay. I kind of skid it out there. Out, out. And then he pulls up and he's like, so I, I will still give you a ride home though if you need a ride home on my motorcycle. <laughs> He tries his angry donut, he fails, and he's like, okay, get on my back in the in the least badass way possible. Yes. Don't, for, don't forget to hug my tummy, <laughs> and we'll drive off together, yes. but I'm mad at you. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fart into your crotch. <laughs> so, <laughs> whole time. I'll be farting the whole time. I'm going to breathe onto your neck. Uh, so, <laughs> meanwhile, back at the interrogation black site, Adam is all in on this story, but he's on Petey's side. He's like, yeah, why a guy has to be such a fucking wuss when they challenge him to a race, right? Yeah, he's the worst. God's on Petey's side, too. So to be clear, this is, yeah. I'm right. No, you're right. Obviously. So, and of course, Nick explains to, to, the, to his son that sometimes the bravest thing you can do is poop yourself and run away. I mean, that sometimes <laughs> it takes more strength to, to back down. Think about it. 
There's also this great, this is the first of Noah's best worsts, where he's like, look at the world around us. If you say anything not politically correct, they cancel you. Yeah. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, dude? Here at the CIA black site. Yes. <laughs> yeah, cancel culture is a big deal at the CIA black site, <laughs> where they have him handcuffed at a table for an interrogation. He says, "You're it, the literal line is, you're enslaved by political correctness. Yeah, same. Where did that come same. from? <laughs> and they, oh, they were so proud of this line. He goes, "You know who they call a man who are free from all freedom as a slave." If you're what? free from freedom, it's like a double negative. It's like, eh, but if you're slave you're to slavery, it, you're free. So. Nope, not what that if one. You're free to slavery. Oh, another line that they were absurdly proud of. He says, "Let me let me explain this to show. If you had everything that you ever wanted." Would it be enough? That would be great. That would be perfect. Yes! Like, oh my literally. god, that line was so good. Right? And and the kid is just going like, well, I mean, if if one of the things I wanted was enough, then yes, by definition, <laughs> that would be included in the things. And Dad's like, okay, my amazing verbal trap didn't really work there. <laughs> uh, back to the story. I was doing a like, uh, car uh, donuts or something. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we we fucking car rev our way back into the races, and there's so much racing noising going on over it. I was like, I feel like someone held a mic up next to Fuerza and was like, "Holy shit, is this a movie?" <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, and and clearly though, like this entire production was by and large an excuse to squeal tires and rev engines, right? Yeah. So we should point out that like every time <laughs> we go to the races, we get two minutes of like artsy bullshit camera work around the races and we get a bunch of cars you know squealing their way up to the starting line and shit but we don't actually see races because they don't know how to do that we see the first second of the race and that's it right we see the opening montage of a bunch of scenes from fast and the furious right yeah exactly is that a thing at these races that you have to it's like and you like inch up to the starting line in some exciting way because they do that a couple of times. Yeah, we see a lot of that. I sadly know so little about cars. I wondered if like they ever accidentally do that too much and the guy has to like shamefacedly back his car up uh, like, sorry, no, St Steve sneezed it. and I thought he was starting the race. That's me. <laughs> okay, br bring it back, bring it back and stop. Stop, no, stop, stop, Okay, okay, yeah. So they definitely asked this, this whole cast. They were like, so does anybody know any like really good car tricks? And everybody was like, donuts at the same time. <laughs> That's all they have. Yeah. So literally watching them park well would have been more exciting. Like, <laughs> yep. if, 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 if I had seen somebody like parallel park on one cut, yeah. I would have been like, nice. That is right. sexy right there. Yeah. Fuck no, nope, yeah. they couldn't do it. So then we cut to fucking Anita watching Ben sleep. Right. Mm -hmm. He wakes up. She's hovering over him. She's like, are you still Christian or can we fuck? And he's like, still Christian. She's like, damn it. Again, just a little bit of meta commentary here. What we were supposed to assume is that the dad is sitting with his son at a CIA black site and being like, so then Ben woke up and your mom was giving him the look. I mean, you know, <laughs> the look. I hate this. I hate this so much. So, and Ben is like, uh, he's like, no, no, because again, just throwing out the random Republican applause line. He's like, God designed a man and a woman to be together in marriage. One man and one woman looks right at the camera and winks. Yeah. But it, it felt like he was taking aims at like a polycule. Right. Or calling Nita a dude. It was unclear. <laughs> you might as well look to the side and be like, right, Kim Davis. And she walks in and she's like, ding. That's yes. right. <laughs> oh, Kim Davis is the flag girl for their next race. <laughs> In a bikini. But girlfriend, girlfriend's great. She's like, well, uh, that's ridiculous. I don't know. God doesn't have to watch us fuck, but we're fucking. And he, he gets mad. He's like, yes, God does have to watch us fuck. I, I'm making a weird point right now. I got off track <laughs> of my thing, but yes, I think he does. I think he has to watch us. She's like, no, it's okay for us to fuck. I believe in God. And he goes, the devil believes in God. It's more important that you're exactly my version of exactly my religion. That's all that matters. <laughs> right. Which, to be clear, he has been for two days? Yeah, as far as we know, two to possibly three days. <laughs> also, also, what age are these people supposed to be, right? Because this guy's 31. Yep, great question. But he's still in his, like, childhood bedroom and his mom comes in, his girlfriend's sneaking in the window. She's 26. Mm-hmm. 
Mom's 33? Yeah, right, right. Mom's not significantly older than son. Yeah. And mom walks in and, like, again, Anita has snuck in and she's like, Anita, this house is your home. You can talk to us about anything, but don't sneak in like a whore. And I just wrote in my notes, <laughs> ah, yes, good Christian empathy. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, Anita is, uh, gets in trouble for sneaking in and has to go make breakfast but she just can't breakfast. Okay. Stop. <laughs> what? Stop the podcast. What happens here? What's happening here? I don't care if we talk about anything else about this movie. <laughs> we need to really dig in on what happens with Nina. Yes. <laughs> Here's my theory. Okay. Here's my theory. Go. I, so I'm going to make this a short 45 minute theory. Got it. They gave Nita a bowl of flour and they were like, and you just mind making breakfast. And so the actress picked up the bowl, shook it gently back and forth, <laughs> mm-hmm, waved her hands over it as though she was casting a magic spell. Yeah. And that's the pantomime. <laughs> she starts, she's supposed to be getting frustrated and angry or something because she just can't breakfast. But the <laughs> mime that she makes is like she's about to crack this bowl on the countertop. And then she realizes that she can't rage slam the bowl and then she doesn't know what to do <laughs> she has to abandon it so she's yes. like i hate bowl no that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> to sm- yell i hate bowl and smash it right now what what do i what do you guys mean there's a bowl of flour how does this turn into break i don't understand what's happening <laughs> it's so impossibly silly also, the other thing that's happening to create breakfast there's a bowl of uh, assuming flour here yes that she's supposed to breakfast and mom has one egg i believe Mm -hmm. in an even larger bowl and she's whisking one egg in like an industrial vat like she's standing inside she's whisking the shit out of that egg yeah yeah Yeah, like she's mad at it (laughs) yeah i also i love so (laughs) ben comes out of the bedroom at this point and somebody has to acknowledge like like, wow you sure don't have a broken leg anymore he's like i sure don't i healed quick because jesus (laughs) (laughs) Dumb. But then Petey walks in, right? Petey, the brother, walks in and he's like, oh, Anita, you're here. Should I tell everybody about you fucking Nikki, the rival racer last night? Nikki D. Nikki D. Miss. She got the D from Nikki D. Mm-hmm. D- Nikki D. This is the yeah. dad. It's the dad. Right. She yeah. Once again, him. clue you, the audience, in in a way that we, the viewer, were not clued in. Nikki, the rival racer, is the dad who's telling this story. Right, who will appear 35 minutes later in the movie for 14 seconds. Yes, uh uh-huh. Yeah, but mom's very offended by this. She's like, son, we do not accuse people of being whores. That's my job. (laughs) In the literal last scene. Yeah, we don't do that to their faces. Yeah, so, but right. So Anita storms off. She's very mad about her secret affair with Nikki being publicly aired. And then Ben doesn't even want breakfast anymore. And Petey's like, well, I'll, I'll still have some fucking breakfast. I'll eat I'll double or triple or whatever. <laughs> when he says, I do want breakfast, I was like, oh my God, if we get to just watch Petey sit down and eat 11 pancakes. <laughs> that would have been that would have been an amazing scene. <laughs> but instead, mom's like, no, you know what? Fuck you. You're an asshole today. You go to Denny's now. And she like starts cleaning up plates. Yep. I wanted him to be like, Okay, well, you're whisking one egg. I don't you whisked that egg for nothing, then. The fuck yep. that was going to be. So, yeah, I was going to go to Denny's either way. <laughs> so then we head back to Adam, who's, like, trying to sort out the plot at this point. He's like, what is this movie about? And why are you telling me about what a whore my mom was? <laughs> right, because like, he literally, he's telling her, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I hooked up with your mom after knowing her for eight hours because she was impressed with how well I drove a fucking car. <laughs> Right. Hey, Dad, does this have any relevance at all to the larger point of your story or why I should become Christian? Yeah, absolutely does. So texture wise, when you get in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like medium coarse sandpaper <laughs> opposite. But so, but the key is, though, it doesn't. Right. Like there's never any reason why any of this has to be included in the story. If you're looking at it as a story that Nick is telling to Adam. <laughs> right. And and as though Adam is trying to change the subject away from his mom's fucking riding the gear shift. He's like, I mean, you hit me a bunch. Are we going to talk about that? And he's like, oh, yeah, right. 
Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's like, wait, aren't you an alcoholic that, that beat me up when I was a kid? I, I feel like my mom's sexual exploits aren't the, really the, 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 the sin that needs to be dealt with here. Yeah, well, uh, agree to disagree. Yeah, well, the dad's like, hey, let's not look backwards, okay? Let's look forwards. And Adam's like, no, because you said the dumbass to know where you're going line from earlier. And dad's like, oh, fuck, I did. Yeah, didn't I? actually, you did say that. I would like you to, if it would be ideal, if you could actually go back, I would say 60 seconds in your story and tell that exact, exact story scene. one more time. Okay. And then the people watching this movie of it, if that was a thing, would be able to watch exactly the same 60 but, seconds again. In case they didn't catch that clever Denny's line earlier. Yeah, we do the fucking shrieking eels bit. And then they, they literally show us the movie again. Yes. Yeah. They show us a minute carbon copy of the movie again. Yeah. For no reason. Last time on this movie that you're watching <laughs> moments ago. So, yeah, so we get to see what happened after the Denny's line, which is that PD goes full demon scream of anger. Yes. Right after mom takes away his whisked egg and bowl of flour. Oh, was he yelling about the breakfast being taken away because he wanted some dry, loose flour? Or was he, <laughs> the yeah. was he yelling yeah. or was he already at the next scene and yelling? I couldn't oh, tell. Oh, okay. No. All right. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, he got denied breakfast, so he turned into a werewolf. And then I added... It's okay. I've seen Heath miss a breakfast, so I get it. <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, that is how he reacts. I like to eat right away. This isn't continental at all. <laughs> Sleeping is long. So yeah, so but we we like distorted power cord our way to the races, but that's like they're teasing us there, right? Because the next scene isn't at a race. The next scene is Ben having dinner with his mom and Gus. <laughs> yep, they're eating. They're eating spaghetti and milk, like, you know, grown-ups do. Yes, right. They're having oh. a very grown-up dinner of spaghetti with milk. What did, What would you like to drink? Milk. It was definitely like that. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> Pete's just got, like, a bib on that mom, like, is taking off. <laughs> it's got a fork with a really big handle. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> she reaches over and cuts the spaghetti up for him, <laughs> gives him a spoon. <laughs> Yeah, Are you it's... all done? All done. Okay, okay. Let's wash our hands. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, you know, I was I was going to like defend my girlfriend earlier when Petey was talking about what a whore she was, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I guess I'm not a very good Christian yet. And the pastor's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's not like you thought sexy thoughts or something serious. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you get a <laughs> call a person a whore while they're in your you, house. No, you just hurt a human being. You didn't hurt Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but mom's like, don't worry. God's working on Petey and Anita. And I'm like, well, you would have thought God to be a little more efficient. Yeah. Right? I mean, he fails with millions of people a year and sends them to hell, but he's working he's on working. them. He's working. The important thing is that God tried. Mm -hmm. Participation trophy for God. Good job. <laughs> yeah. But just then, Young Nick, the the narrator, the dad storyteller, shows up at Ben's house to trash talk him about racing. Yeah. He wants to find out who the big dog is. Yep. And Ben's Christian smack talk here is so fantastic. He's like, I want to find out who the big dog is, or is it because I've been with your girl? To which Ben replies, joke's on you. Jesus is the one that owns that girl. Yeah. Right. Oh, this is, it's it's amazing. He's like, uh, you know, you think you've got all the power. And he's like, no, real power is raising life from the dead. And Nick is like, fucking what? Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy billionaire remake. Nick is just like, I'm sorry, man. I came here to do like a, a smack talk race thing. Are, are you OK? Because you've said two just absolutely psychotic things. <laughs> Jokes on you. I have herpes. What? Yeah, what? Dude, That's What? I really, when he said the thing about raising from the dead, I really wanted his buddy, the necromancer next door to be like, that's right. It is. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I can cast third level spells now. But ultimately, he says he, he agrees to race Nick on the condition that if they race, he gets to tell Nick and all of Nick's friends like D money about the wonders of Jesus saving their souls. Okay. <laughs> Question for you guys. <laughs> Is there any skill you possess that you are confident in that you would take that? Because <laughs> I, I was like, I it could be a jerking me off contest. And I'd be like, nah. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's not worth it. Not worth the risk. <laughs> so baby Nick leaves and Ben goes back into the garage. He, he needs to 
sexually caress car parts for a minute. A lot. Nobody in this movie has ever touched a woman as tenderly as they <laughs> touch this car. Yeah. Yeah. But PD comes in and he starts caressing this car that's under a car cover. And it's like, boy, our dead dad sure liked cars, huh? What the fuck are you talking about, man? Why the hell would you bring that up? Are you up? telling the car to sheesh? This is the beginning of a car porn. Yeah. Like, this is literally the, like, are you fucking our stepdaughter scene from every porn? <laughs> With a car. Right. But Petey is still very angry at Jesus and angry at Ben for liking Jesus. So they get into a fight. Now, well, I would say a fist fight, <laughs> except they, like, they don't, it's just, like, it's all silly punchless shit you can see several times in this thing one of them will raise their fist and go like no we don't know how to do that without actually hitting each other so i'll do a, a nose pinch i'm gonna go with a nose pinch hey two are doing a smoosh fight we said it's a smoosh face fight you smoosh my face i smoosh your face and and end of list of things we do yeah smoosh face fight asshole so yeah they have a little smoosh face fight but in the end, they realize that they really love each other and they're they happy. They almost brothers. kiss. Yeah, very close to kiss. Very. There was a very solid, I'm going to say second and a half, where they were like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, Oh, my God. Our faces are over so and we're tickling each other and we're close laughing. together now. It's just, and are, are we doing this? <laughs> mom shows up. And then, and then mom comes out and she's like, are you two fighting? And they're like, no, we're not. No. We weren't kissing. We weren't kissing. <laughs> we were fighting. Yes, we were fighting. What we were did fight you say? <laughs> yeah. Get in here and fight us? <laughs> so mom, and so we get this next scene. Uh, mom and Gus are doctoring the brothers back up because they're all beat up now. Now, both in their universe, doctoring is just repeatedly dabbing at the exact same spot with a spotless white towel. Ow. Ow. Yeah. That's where the injury. <laughs> ow. Mom. Ow. <laughs> It keeps hurting. Yeah, it keeps hurting. In fairness, they have literally identical lip cuts. They mm -hmm. do the same like it's the so same silly. like stick scr scratch and sniff sticker of a lip cut that they got from a book. I told you boys not to have a who can kiss harder contest. Look what happened, right? <laughs> so, and then the mom's like, "Well, it's bad enough that you're fighting, but at least you guys haven't agreed to a big act three race for Jesus." I have to go now. I have to leave. It is unrelated. <laughs> Different what? reasons. Nothing to do with that. What are you leaving for? You said it was. Oh, no. You said it was unrelated. Oh, yeah. You're leaving. Okay. Unrelated. I have to what, go. What, to what, for what, though? Mr. Peanut. Octane in the You're going to talk to Mr. Peanut. Day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Ben takes PD out to the garage and he's, he explains the race. He's like, hey, man, I agreed to race Nikki, but only if they'd let me tell him about Jesus if I won. And Petey's like, dude, this is terrible because I did the tune-up on Nick's car. You could never beat a car that I engined. Tuned up? Yeah, I don't fucking what, know. What did, what did you do exactly? Like, yes. lug nut? What, what, are you, what are you talking? This is the glorious moment where we, where we and the filmmakers realize at the same time they don't know anything about cars. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, no, I've been... Getting it all room, room, room. I put the rooms in it. A lot of rooms. You would be amazed at how many rooms I got in there. Yeah. Tires. What? And then they're so, it's so stupid. They're like, he's like, you can't race him tonight. You don't even have a car. And he's like, well, you, you recognize that we're both leaning against a car right now. That we right? were stroking. We were, we were both earlier. erect and rubbing Sexually. against the same car. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. A tailpipe. This is a movie trope, right? When someone takes a really old car and it works better than a new car. Is that real? Have cars gotten worse? Is that why Heath has been driving a 1992 Chevy Tahoe since the moment <laughs> I met him? It's a 96. But I, I mean, honestly, in terms of like. It's not as nice as a Tahoe. <laughs> you know, get up and go and shit like the, 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 the zero to 60 on the average car. Probably they were because we didn't mind, you know. Killing like stuffing baby seals directly into the engine block back then. So yeah, I, I would say probably. There you go. Most of my knowledge is based on Dom Toretto, and he's all into like American Muscle from like the sixties and seventies. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, we like, hey, car scientists, get on that. Make a better car than sixty years ago. 
Come on, guys. Well, but that's just the thing. What you actually need in a car is not the ability to go super, super fast in the first three seconds of movement, right? That's the problem. I love to, by the way, so that we get this little, they're going to fix up the car together montage. The montage is nine seconds long. They completely <laughs> run out of shit other than changing <laughs> tires that one can do with a car. They don't even get to the song's intro before it's over. <laughs> it is genuinely like they asked me to direct the car montage. Yes. They were like, all right, Eli. Now they prep the car. What do they do? And I was like, they I probably hand each other wrenches. Wax it. They have to <laughs> weld the car to the car. Right. He right? pulls out a welding. Just like he's welding the car. <laughs> he pulls out a he pulls out a welding torch, turns it on, stares at it for a good ten seconds, and then he's like, Oh, yeah, probably goggles for welding now. Yeah, I'll right. Yeah, that's now. right. That's the reason why they have these. And then they pan away and we get the craftsman. Product placement. It says Craftsman. Yeah, on I'm car. sure Craftsman was very proud. They got like a free wrench for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, somehow we all knew we were headed towards racing for Jesus, and yet we still need a minute to process the fact that that's where we landed. So we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me get back to the hard sell. Will the tires on the car go round and round? Will PD deliver a single line as though he's not forcing it out of a constipated face anus? Will the interrogation with Adam Framing play any role other than padding the runtime? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the high-octane conclusion of Buying Time. You've got to listen to me, son. I have nothing to say to you. Just let me tell you the story. Your immortal soul <sighs> is at risk. Fine, fine. All right, go. So, okay, go so there we are. We're in the backseat of my Dodge Charger, and... Your mom is like spinning on my pole like she's trying to unscrew come on, are you, the come damn on, thing. Dad, I don't want to hear. You could face about, God look, tomorrow, seriously? son. What will you uh, say to God? I just, I just feel like it can't possibly be necessary for you to tell that exact story. That's ridiculous. It is, son, and I've risked everything to tell it to you. But fine, fine, go. Okay. So anyway, it was at that moment that your mother slipped off her sandals and showed me what she could do with her. Feet. No, it was like she had four no. hands, each no. one wetter I will than the last. literally do whatever religion you want me to be for you to stop talking. Please stop talking. Christian, done. I love Jesus now. Just please stop. I'm Christian now. You're welcome. Sure. Yep. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. Before we get to the big race, we're going to rejoin Mom getting home from like night church, I guess. Mm-hmm. Great Christian movie bingo card square here. The person walks in the door and then the doorbell rings too soon afterwards. So they must have just been standing directly behind them trope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She closes the door. She goes, I am home. And then immediately there's a knock at the door. <laughs> but it's Anita. She's very upset. So she weepily explains to mom that she's pregnant. She got pregnant when she was fucking Nikki D after his big race. Yeah. Right. But mom doesn't know that. So mom's like, how do I put this nicely? How many dicks? <laughs> Was it my son or not? Nah? Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's Nick. It's Nicodemus, the dad in the interrogation room. I also, I think this is just a case of bad acting, but the mom is like, oh, honey, that's really too bad. I wrote my notes. Hey, can you be a little understanding like with your face to the crying girl? Oh, it's amazing that Anita's like, I want to do the right thing. And I'm like, I'm almost certain that's an abortion at this yep. point. I to be honest with you, and based on what we know of the movie, I'm right, right? <laughs> yes. Your your husband turns out to be an alcoholic abuser, and abortion was definitely the right choice. Yeah. But the mom explains, of course, that the real problem here isn't the pregnancy. It's the fact that Anita isn't her religion. You have a heart disease called sin, which, uh, <laughs> by the way, we will be selling you have a heart disease called sin t-shirts at the Toronto live show. <laughs> we might I ordered a lot that. of them, guys. <laughs> so um, we don't actually have those. Don't, don't come no. looking for it. We should have them. Maybe we can have those. I don't I don't think we have time, but still. Um, she's like, well, what do I have to do? And she's like, well, I will help you if you join my religion first right now in this very moment. Mm hmm. So she, uh, she's like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. She might as well take a bunch of expired coupons out of her wallet and be like, if only someone would ask to speak to a manager for the years. <laughs> <laughs> but then we, we head over to the big race for Jesus. And I'm, I wrote in my notes, even more revving and squealing of tires. How did we get so fucking lucky? <laughs> right. This is the first time we see a bouncy bounce car. 
Is the point of bouncy bounce cars to seem haunted? <laughs> I've never understood. The hydraulics thing? Yeah. Yeah. They do seem haunted, right? I don't think that's the point. I've but never understood the point of that. Yeah. They're fucking sweet is the point. Okay. Are they? I feel like a zero seconds in, you're like, oh, okay, I want this. Yes, right. Please don't do this again. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, it's fucking sweet for five seconds. Five minutes. <laughs> well, it's fucking sweet if you're not in it. <laughs> but we see, and, and again, of course, every time we go to a race, we have to have two minutes of this artsy fucking bullshit footage of cars squealing or whatever. So we get a bunch of that. We see a couple of cars taken up. And then... Ben and Petey show up in this old charger and everybody starts cheering and the audience goes crazy for way too long. <laughs> it's a solid. We watch all of the crowd extras take breaths like, yeah, yeah! are we still going? Okay. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. So and then, and then we get some more of that great Christian shit talk. Oh, <laughs> between him and money. Well, but they don't I don't think they talk. They they're not supposed to talk right away. <laughs> so they show up, they get out of their car. They see the rival bad guys, you know, D money and his crew over there and Nikki D, yep. Nikki D and D money. And they like start to walk toward him and be like, oh, you know what? I'm thinking we uh, we lean back against our cars kind of sexually. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, we menacingly stare at each other for like. 45 seconds? So go 45 in seconds of menacingly staring. Yeah, Do yeah, you know how sure. long 45 seconds is in real reality watching nothing happen for 45 <laughs> seconds? Yeah. It's so goddamn long. Well, I, I, if there's enough cars revving in the background, though, it's very exciting. It, it builds a lot of tension. <laughs> it's like when you're at a convention and you see someone you want to talk to and then someone steps in front of you to talk to them and you have to be like, I was going over to this T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh mm, so Yes. But then we finally get, they finally pull the trigger on it and we get this amazing shit talk where he's like, I'm going to kick your ass in this race. And Ben's like, I don't care because I'm only here to tell you about Jesus and save your soul. Right. I hate to disagree with you on air, Noah, but he does not say kick your ass. He's like, oh, I'm right. here to slam your back, kind. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because it's Christian. I'm a hardcore <laughs> racer and I'll tell you there's no front in here. Fool, miatch, <laughs> <laughs> and then they, and then we get the line. I think these writers were the most proud of, right? Because money says only thing I worship is cash, and Ben says even your money bows before my God. See, and he takes the money out of the dude's hand and he points to the in God we trust, and he's like, see, boom. <laughs> And you know how much people love it when you snatch money out of their hands <laughs> to make a fucking point. But yeah, but it was such a. Good goddamn point. The D money <laughs> stomps away, yes! defeated in a yep. snip. And he's like, fuck, oh, he's God fucking God we trust. <laughs> like he saw a magic trick. He does like a little pace with it. <laughs> and he goes back, he goes back over to his gang and then he starts like angrily pointing over at yeah. Ben. Yes, he's like, that, yes. yes, that guy. We don't That's hear this, but guy. he has to be like yelling to his buddy, made me look like a fool. It says it on all the bills. Dwight Eisenhower, <laughs> 1955, started a new rule. All the bills. What the fuck? Why, Why didn't you, you tell guys me? guys tell me before I went over there? <laughs> now I look like an asshole. Sorry. Is God written on anything else? I look like a butthead. Yeah, and also he's pointing at Ben the whole time. They all know who Ben is, right? Like, why yeah. would he point that guy over there? Like, yeah, Ben, man, we know yeah. he's the main character. <laughs> the one you challenged to a rate. We're all still perfectly silent. You guys were just talking. <laughs> the camera's on him. That guy? Yeah. And then, okay, but we can't get to the race yet because we have to cut back to Adam and old Nikki in, in the interrogation room. And I love Adam just opens this scene up going like, I don't know what to say, man. As though like there was a long pause where Nikki just stared at him. Oh, clearly this son being like, I feel dad, I feel like you're about to get like a beach from mom in like another 10 <laughs> seconds. Can we wrap the story? Just God, don't. Can, is there another part? He goes, Adam goes, look, I don't want to hear any more of this. I'm like, you and me both, bro, but it's the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this kid is asking for him not to describe how his mom got knocked up in the back of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And honestly, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. But then we start talking about apparently like mom died of cancer sometime later. So we talk, start talking about cancer mom. Yes. To explain why Adam's not Christian, I guess. Who again? In the scope of this movie is that random girl who got knocked up by an even more random character 
unrelated to the main character of the movie. Yes. And then got murdered by God with cancer. <laughs> it is genuinely like if one of the sexy girls in the bikinis in a Fast and the Furious movie, Vin Diesel in the next scene was just like, I don't know if you know this, but her mom's going through a really tough time right now. <laughs> her LASIK surgery didn't take and the, and the insurance won't cover it a second time. <laughs> so- Does LASIK not take sometimes? No, I think I just made that up. Okay. <laughs> And then there's this amazing line here. Dad is talking to his son about when mom died. And he's like, I was so depressed. I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to, this is his exact words, find the biggest syringe I could find and jam it straight through my heart. Okay. I feel like me and this guy watched the same hentai. Can I just say that? (laughs) I'm just, I want that kind of confidence the kind of confidence it takes to write that down on a fucking piece of paper and go i should write more words <laughs> what is the biggest syringe you can find like comedy like comically large syringe how big is that in this is a great question in real life yeah and can we when we do the billionaire remake of this movie shoot that as a flashback is it like a movie? lawn dart uh, just yeah like, him finding a big syringe going nah i need a bigger I feel like they make one for horses that we could get good comedic effect with. There you go. There you go. Get some ivermectin going. Yeah. But yeah, but he explains that he hated God for killing Anita and also for not killing you, Adam, my son, along with her. Really, that was the worst part is that he left you alive, which was such a bummer for me. Yeah. I hit you because I missed your mom so much. Again, we have never seen a connection between these two people. As far as we know, they hooked up Three nights ago at a race. Yes, right. I mean, that is as far as we know. That's correct. That's that's canon. No, yeah, that's, that's what yeah, happened. That's, yeah, exactly. That's the story. And he's like, uh, you know, Adam, it, you reminded me of your mom and that made me angry and that's why I hit you. I, it wasn't your fault that I hit you. And I'm like, well, of fucking course it wasn't his. Did you think that that was oh, the... thanks for clearing that up, you yeah. fucking asshole. Jesus Christ, <laughs> you fucking demon. I know what you've been thinking. I deserved it, but no, no, (laughs) you didn't. I'm crushing this apology. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And then he tells the story of his suicide attempt. Yes. And uh, okay, sorry. (laughs) Right before he goes into this, he tries, dad tries to start crying during his little speech Mm -hmm. apology. Yes. But he does it for literally half a syllable. He's like, so then, and then your mom made me really sad. And then he gives up right away. Yes. Yeah. He's yep. like, no, that didn't, that's not, I'm, I'll, I'm doing it badly. I would rather this actor had just yelled the words, cry, 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 than attempt to <laughs> act <the> crying. <laughs> but then he starts telling the story of the time that he tried to shoot himself in the face, but he couldn't because Jesus was holding on to the trigger and wouldn't let him pull it. Well, let's paint the picture the way he does. Mm -hmm. He was lying on the floor in the fetal position with the 45 in his mouth. Very funny image. Mm -hmm. And then he tries to pull the trigger, but literally can't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like (laughs) Jesus literally has his thumb behind the trigger. Well, yeah, he says I'm lying on the floor with the gun in my mouth. And then I couldn't do it. And I love how long it took for Adam, the son, to like get the dumb thing that he was saying. Yes. Right. Right. Uh He's like, I couldn't do it. And son's like. Oh, oh you, you couldn't go through with it. That's like a fucked up situation. Yeah, totally. You couldn't go through it. And he's like, no, 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 no. I mean, the, the trigger wouldn't squeeze. And the son's like, oh, like the, gu- like the, the gun, gun was, was broken. Rusted, like the, tr- the trigger probably. was like rusted over or something like that. He's like, no, no, the gun was fine. And, the and then he's like, like, no, the gun wasn't fine because you couldn't pull the trigger. You I don't just understand said you what you're saying. The- God did a miracle and you understand me when I say <laughs> words now. <laughs> it takes forever. It's the best. And then Adam, of course, he's like, he's like, you know, I, I I get it, Dad. I've I've thought about killing myself as well. And he's like, well, that's because you're not Christian is the problem. Actually, Dad replies, who hasn't? And I wrote, pretty large insight into the writer of this movie. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Look, we all pray for the sweet release of death, son. That's not <laughs> weird, okay? <laughs> you're just the wrong religion. But yeah, but Nikki makes it real clear that he wants to make a Christian of Adam, and that's his goal here. Right. He actually turns directly to the camera to explain that to us. So then we flash back to Anita finishing up with her in Christment. Mm-hmm. Right. 
I wanted her to have mom's Karen haircut, like just from the conversion. <laughs> Mul- uh, expired coupons start multiplying yeah, right exactly. yeah exactly did i join next door in a fugue state I guess. <laughs> <laughs> why am i so much more scared of black people now yeah. but yeah so but anita says she's like why i sure feel great being a christian is awesome i just want to go tell everybody about it and she's like oh you you will it's what we do it's our whole fucking thing but mom doesn't have time for that. They've got to throw a wet blanket on this race for Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's like, oh, I meant to tell you now that I'm a Christian, I have to narc out everybody. I guess that Ben is doing a race with Nikki and winner gets to change the religions of everyone else. I guess we'll, we'll stop by the park and check on uh, black people barbecuing, but then we'll go to the race. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll get, we'll do, knock it all out at the same time. She's like, I know a shortcut. I'll drive. Anita does. So they head to the race. We get there first, though. We get everybody cheering in slow motion for a really long time. There are a lot of like, boy, we're not even close to an hour and 30 minutes yet, are we? <laughs> kind of a montage in this, right? So we get one of those. And then fucking Nick and Ben actually race. This will make mark the first time in over an hour of movie that like we saw more than the first second of a race. And boy, do we find out why. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if these guys had just sat in their cars and gone, <laughs> it would have looked better than this race. They- Did they not do that? Yep. Somebody running behind them with house plants or something. Yeah. <laughs> just throw it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also, like, let's keep in mind that even if you're good at this, even if you really know your shit as a cinematographer and have the camera cars and stuff that you would need to film this properly, it's, this is, like, NASCAR without all the left turns, right? Mm -hmm. That's what, like, it's impossible to make this interesting as Fast and the Furious has proved nine times now. There's a reason why they have gone to space. Right, yeah, exactly. (laughs) But then, middle of the race, suddenly, Mom and Anita pull out right in front of Ben while he's hauling ass down the road. In the middle of the drag race! (laughs) They just pull their car. Oh, is this a good place to... Oh, we're right in the middle of the drag race. Well, and keep in mind that Anita said before they left, I know a shortcut. She knows what road they race on. So her shortcut to the race included the track. (laughs) <laughs> we could go around and come up behind the race, but I say we just take the, we go back the opposite way on the one way and yeah, we'll get there a little bit faster. Right. So I feel like the rest of this is on her, <laughs> but yeah, but Ben swerves out of the way, I guess. Right. Cause they can't actually get footage of him wrecking a car. So we have to guess why it is that car is rolling around later. Well, I'm pretty sure he sees mom Anita in a car directly in front of his mile long track. And he, he presses the jump button. Yeah. The turbo boost. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because he, <laughs> how else would this happen? He does a bunch of flips and stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that they had that one shot of a wrecking car that they could use. Right. We, we just, yeah. It, there's no reasonable way that that could happen from where we were. And of course, when, when he gets into the record, the director decides to go all artsy. So we see like, Memories of him and his brother as a kid riding down a dirt road in dad's convertible. Yeah, he's riding down the Paul Walker road. I expected Paul Walker to pull up next to them and be like, oh, did you guys die in a car crash too? This is the sort of... (laughs) Okay, to be clear, this is Ben's childhood as a flashback that we're watching, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Nick... (laughs) <laughs> knew about the, story. the flashback to he knew so well Ben's childhood story and he's describing it to now Adam and telling it to Adam as part of a story about how much of a slut his mother was yes exactly. the childhood of the guy who used to be dating the girl he ended up fucking is now Adam's mom yes I want to watch that scene and then and then when his car went skaboosh, he was like, whoa, I'm a kid again. It's been a long way. <laughs> Fuck your mom. <laughs> Are you a different religion yet? <laughs> <laughs> and then and I also I have to point out what's going on in this flashback, right? So the kid decides he wants to stand up in the backseat of the convertible. And mom's like, sit down. That's not safe. And dad's like, who gives a fuck about safe? Stand back up, kids. Stand, don't listen to her. Right? 
Like, am I wrong? Yep. I'm not going to live in fear and put on masks and just like sit down in cars. Fuck this. Absolutely not. And also like given what we've seen of this movie so far, like I can't imagine that anything was done vis-a-vis safety as they filmed this kid standing up in this convertible with no seatbelt on. Anyway, just okay. yeah. This seems like I, I this is the kind of thing that Heath violently defends to me as normal while we ride planes together. It's like, <laughs> no, everyone's dad would put them in the trunk if you had something fragile in the back seat. You're making it weird. Because <laughs> it would break. The trunk is safer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, okay, and and now we're backing out of the scarred up operating room eyeball that we zoomed into in the middle of the in-story flashback. Now This is the first time that we as an audience are made aware of the fact that that wasn't the start of the story. Because, again, when we meet Ben, he's recovering from a car accident. Right. Right. So this is where we all had to sort of sort out if if there was a time loop going on, if if we had been somehow like thwarted by Dr. Strange. Separate incidents. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, but yeah, apparently he was in Rex at both the beginning of this movie and the end. This is the end wreck. Yes. I, I want to point out, by the way, just excellent foreshadowing. They have a giant heart syringe in this operating room. So, Ooh. Right? <laughs> I really wanted Bad Dad to come in as like Nikki or whatever the fuck his name is and be like, ha, I won. Now get you. Oh, not the time. Sorry. I didn't <laughs> Hi, Nita. How you doing? But it, I thought that the operating room was a little crowded already with mom, Gus and Petey all standing around as the doctors operated on his insides. <laughs> unsuccessfully right right but of course they have to be there so that ben can turn to Petey and tell him he loves him with his last words Mm -hmm. and then he dies like on cue just in time yes Uh (laughs) and i love you he's like perfect i want my flatline thing to be a buzzer though and like you know like the end of a basketball game like a horn or i want that instead of nice the the flatline noise fuck yeah man i want there to be an awkward pause after my last words i want to be like and i always loved Cricket Welton. Okay. Are you still alive? Yep. No, very much alive. Cool. Oh, was that, oh, was that like your last words? <laughs> there it is. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, technically his last words were, I'm still alive. Laugh, laugh, laugh. Beat. All right. <laughs> Fucked it up. Got him. Prank war. So, so Petey goes outside to be sad about his brother being dead and to be sad about his fake scar not looking more realistic, probably. Sure. And Gus comes in and he's like, Hey, man, this would be a great time to change religions, huh? Right now? Yeah. Feel up for a theological discussion, you and I? I almost went with best worst metaphor for sin here because this is where Gus explains to Petey that you know how car makers make cars shitty on purpose? God did that to you. Yeah, he says, you know about planned obsolescence? And he's like, yeah, it's the way they put in cheap ass plastic parts so that the car won't last for it. He's like, yeah, God did that with you and sin. And he's like, is that? Is that what we're going with? You guys really want to? We're rolling with that. Okay, all right. I guess that was in the fucking script. Christianity's like firewire, kind of. (laughs) So yeah, he's like. So the problem is that God set up a system where everybody fell short of His expectations and gets burned in hell for eternity because of God's mistakes. So uh, you want to you want to worship Him? Maybe Maybe. (laughs) worship. No, and of course. As he's getting this Jesus speech, Nikki st- shows up and sort of stands off to the side and hears all the important Jesus can fix you parts of the speech. Yeah. At one point, he's like, no, but you understand when you stand before God, Jesus will stand up and say, no, I have paid his price. And I want to, does Jesus have to stand up every time there's a Christian? Right. Yeah. When there's a big tidal wave in you know, the Sudan, does Jesus get to chill <laughs> if everyone's not? Is that his 15? He's like, oh, no, it's OK. It's OK, everybody it was in an atheist conference. I'm good. I can have lunch. Well, yeah. And you've got to assume that, like, you know, when a, when a church gets like burns down or some terrible thing, that, like a bunch of Christians show up all at once. He's got to be like half ass in it at a certain point. Right. It's oh, like, yeah. No, I paid the price for this one. No, I paid the price for this. No, I paid the price for this one. God, how many of these motherfuckers did we kill? Actually, you have to go to hell because Jesus sort of mumbled and he said, I pain the prime. So yeah, you, you have to still go to hell. Sorry, Jesus, his heart wasn't in that one. And he's like, so, but anyway, so Gus is, is giving Petey the hard sell on Jesus. 
right? And Petey's like, but God, like, couldn't save a, a wretch like me, could he? He's like, no, you'd be surprised. Even people as shitty as you. He's like, but I killed my brother. And Gus is like, no, no, God killed your brother. So you want to worship him? Yeah, how about worshiping him? You know, maybe. <laughs> no? All right. And then, of course, Petey has the whole, but I don't want to go to hell moment. And, and then he converts to Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> so to be clear, the moral is God is cool about breaking the street racing Bible code. If you do it as part of a preaching bet where you get to preach to a gang of street racers, if you win. Well, so, I don't know that he is, though, because like God killed him. Right. So like, I think I think the, the moral might be the exact opposite of that. Does he? Oh, does he go to heaven here? Is it the assumption that he does? Well, I'm sure he goes to heaven, but he still gets killed, you know? Yep. So that's a that's gold. That's like squad goals is dying as a Christian, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Fucks up their whole thing, doesn't it? So then we cut to a car pulling up at the races, which uh, apparently I, I thought this was the same race. I'm like, wow, they didn't stop when there was a fatal accident, huh? They were like, well, we still have seven more races to go. <laughs> but but no, this is a different racing moment. And now. Heedy is preaching to the street racers just like Ben did back before he got killed for trying to do that. Huh? And huh? Anita's there and she's had her baby now. What? <laughs> she was pregnant like four seconds ago. Because apparently there was a big time cut there. We jumped uh, forward. Yeah. So are we supposed to assume that Petey has been prophetizing at races for like months now? Because yes. I feel like attendance would have taken a hit. If like, <laughs> oh man, you got to go to the underbridge race. Now, I will warn you, you do have to listen to pretty heavy handed prophetization <laughs> for the first 25 minutes. But then we should but after race that. and we have, you have, you have group sex and everyone does coke. It's fun. I don't know. NASCAR seems to keep going just fine. That's true. That's yeah, fair. right, right. Yeah. So and also during this little bit, we have this flashback moment to like the movie. Sure. Christian movie. Bingo. Remember the movie inside the movie. Right. But it's not like even an individual person's memories because it includes the present black site framing as well as the past. So it's really just saying like we did pretty good, huh? This whole movie, really. <laughs> This, so we're now I want again we I want to cut to the father being like and then that's when your mother thought of all the story I just told you including <laughs> me telling you this story <laughs> and then of course well uh, Petey is is preaching he's tag teaming with Nikki right Nikki is actually throwing in a little of the preaching as well and this ends with Nikki looking directly into the camera and saying and I quote no one comes unto the father but through me. <laughs> like, like the dude broke the fourth wall so hard, Kool-Aid man was startled by it. <laughs> yep. So the point of that line in the, like, that means Jesus is basically a bouncer at a segregated country club. That's, yes. that's what the, yeah, private party. That's right. What that line. Jesus is. Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> oh, Jew. No, no. Gross. Yeah. yeah. So, but we're not done yet. We have to cut back to the interrogation room where now the sunglasses guys are done with all this father and son reunion bullshit, right? Apparently, the time has come for the men in black to charge Nick with hate crimes for being a Christian. <laughs> they, they, they grab him and they're like, you're charged with hate crimes. And he's like, oh, because I'm Christian? And I was like, I mean, yeah, probably. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the root of it. Statistically. Pretty, it's like the most likely <laughs> thing in America to have you cause you doing hate crimes, right? Because oh, I feel like we should get more play out of the they think hate crime laws are a slippery slope argument, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so but the key here, apparently the reason this was all here is that the guys, the men in black wanted to charge dad with illegal being of a Christian. So they brought Adam there and they're like, I bet he tries to turn a Christian, turn him Christian, huh? I bet if we put him together, he'll he'll commit crimes and and we'll have video of him Christianizing a person. That was the whole plot. And it worked because he just couldn't help it. Yeah. He was like, mm -hmm. Jesus, you really have to be Christian now. And they were like, ha -ha. <laughs> took like five seconds. Nice. Yes. Yeah, the Christian shave and a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
just Ray Comfort straining and sweating under a light somewhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, the dad has to turn right to the camera and goes, how's that for freedom in this here home of the brave that we've got going here where you can't even use the N word anymore? Ow, ow. <laughs> and then they do this. Okay. So <laughs> cancel culture of slavery. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> you got me. That's what she said. So, and then they wrap a chain around Nick's neck because I guess when they when they said arrested, they mean we're just going to kill you here in this black site, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's Christians. They understand that cops are allowed to do whatever they want. I guess, okay, yeah, fair, fair. So, like, they throw the hood back on Adam, so at this point they have an excuse so we don't see anything else that happens in the movie. And they kill him with the silliest possible sound effects. Yeah. It's literally hello. <laughs> Chick, chick, blow. I, 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 my notes are, it's a Michael Scott improv scene. I'm weeping with laughter. <laughs> well, if they were going to shoot him, what was up with the wrapping of the chain around his neck? That was fun. <laughs> Listen, I brought chains. I just want to do my thing yeah, first. You, I know gonna... you guys are going to shoot him, but like, I brought these. <laughs> See, I thought I was going to go. That's or they're trying to choke him with a chain. They're like, this is never going to work because there's gaps in it, guys. There's, there's too it many gaps, it's guys. Too it's a very of a thick chain. chain. <laughs> I feel like an so, idiot. Anybody bring a gun? I feel like one of us has a gun, right? And then, of course, at the very, it's all blacked out. We hear the gunshot and everything. And the typing comes back. The Commodore 64 typing shows up to say, you have been warned. And I'm like, but what have I been warned, though? Right. Don't fall for the can you not prophetize trick if you're ever taken to a CIA black site. Or even if the person that challenges you to a street race promises to become Christian at the end, don't do it. Wait, I, I don't know what the warning was, though. I think the warning is that it's like your turn to fuck this kid's mom. Three years into the future, Christianity will be illegal and a hate crime. I think that's oh. what they're actually saying. I hope so. <laughs> Fingers fucking crossed. All right. Happy ending. Oh, who knew? All right. So clearly this movie was patterned after Fast and the Furious, which means we're looking at some 26 sequels and spinoffs in the future. Which are you guys most looking forward to? Oh, uh, the one where they jump a car over Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> What's the the faith of the Furious? The oh, OK. One. All right. Yeah. Nice. nice. Well done. And, well, that's going to do it for our review of Buying Time. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to bait this trap once more. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll once again be joined by Skeptic of the Millennia, Michael Marshall. But I've found a documentary that I believe can break even him. It's called Eat the Sun, and it is a documentary about how you can, too, stare directly into the sun. And, in fact, it's good for you. Oh, my fucking God. All right, so with that to look forward to. your eyes. We're going to bring episode 345 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help it done by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on your, all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathe the Gay, The Citation, The D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of B. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryden Slotting of Evil Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Vin Diesel went on to walk Paul Walker's daughter down the aisle at her wedding because God killed her dad for being Mormon and that's fake. Gus turned out to be a child molester. Just like, uh, uh, statistically speaking. Yep. D Money turned his life over to Buddha. Now he's just D. Interstitial one. I don't see anybody. Is everybody here? Oh, I'm here. Interstitial one. Click. I'm, right. I was faster. Oh, yeah. it was faster. I feel like I lost. You did. You did. But it felt close. It was mm. very close. So photo finish. 
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. When you think of First Energy, you probably think about the men and women who keep the lights on. What you might not know is that they're also lighting the way in our community. See their stories at firstenergycorp.com slash lighttheway.